life is too short just to be average. Especially as a team, if you want to supersede your competitors, you better have a competitive culture. It better be every day. It's the competitive nature that drove us. Success does not come easy. Don't stop. We're joined now by three-time Super Bowl champ and ESPN NFL analyst, Darren Woodson. Hi, I'm Darren Woodson, former Dallas safety, three-time world champ, and current pro football analyst. Darren, you earned the reputation of being a hard hitter. You were a captain for the Cowboys, 13 seasons with Dallas. What are your memories of playing for the boys? It wasn't so much about the individual part. It was about the team aspect and, and us winning championships. I'm going with the Cowboys this way. I think it starts the running game. And here you go with the Cowboys. <laughs> Darren Woodson says he remembers the day he first walked into Texas Stadium and saw the Ring of Honor. I looked up and I said, you know, one of these days I want to be up there. Today's on the ring, number 28, Darren Woodson! You're going to be surrounded by those who sharpen you, who push you to the limit, who make you become a better football player and a better person on and off the field. There are four levels of commitment. And it applies not only in your business life, but in your family life. Number one is existent. When you're existent, you're just there. And then there's those people that are compliant. I'm going to show up. When they tell me to show up, I'm going to act like they want me to act. I'm going to dress like the, the way they want me to dress, but I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to make this business any better. And then there's committed. You're going to make sure the boss knows that, hey, I'm all the way in, guys. I'm here. But let me tell you the one I like. That person that's compelled. When it's game time, you look to your right and you know that guy that's compelled. You're like, yeah, we're going to war today. Here we go. He's got my back. Look at yourself. Look within yourself and find out, who are you? Am I committed to doing the job that I'm doing or am I compelled? And that's what I'm asking you guys today. Who are you? You want someone to go from existent to compelled, you have to keep them on your hip and guide them. Be a leader. I wish you were still playing, don't you? First of all, I want to say thank you for having me today. I want to tell you a story. Who remembers Tom Landry? Well, Tom Landry at one point was the winningest coach in the NFL. 20 straight winning seasons. But in 1986, the Dallas Cowboys, led by Tom Landry, they go 7-9. 1987, the team goes 7-8. And, and then in 1988, Dallas Cowboys go 3-13. and 13. The Cowboys get bought by the young upstart owner out of Arkansas named Jerry Jones. Did I just hear someone boo? <laughs> Did I just? I, the first thing he does is he fires the legend in Tom Landry. People in Dallas are in an uproar. And what does he do? Now you're replacing the most buttoned up coach, wore a suit on the sideline, wore his hat, the most professional person you've ever met in Tom Landry with. Jimmy Johnson, who's just just wild and crazy guy. So Jimmy comes in, and on the first day, Jimmy has a meeting with the team. Jerry introduces him to the team. Jimmy walks up and he says, it's March. But in July, we're going to have a conditioning test. And in that conditioning test, you have to pass it. Tells the entire team that. Half the guys in that room say, yeah, right. July 24th, they're doing conditioning. Half the guys are falling out. Can't make it. One guy in particular falls down during the, during the conditioning test. He can't catch his breath. So Jimmy says, I can't say it the way Jimmy said it. He <laughs> says, why don't you take your butt to the asthma field? cut him on the spot. It was cutthroat. So what ends up happening? They start to get better. Jimmy starts to bring his guys in. They start to buy into the system. 92 comes in. That's when they draft me. 
Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I was the guy that, that helped him get to the Super Bowl. I'm not saying that. <laughs> he was looking for alpha dogs. He asked my coach in college, who's Lovey Smith, what kind of guy is Darren Woodson? He said, well, he's got an alpha dog mentality. He'll fight you. He said, that's my guy. He drafted me. But I walk into the locker room, and I'm surrounded by the same mentalities. Guys who wanted to win. Our practices were harder than our games, I promise you. Because guys are always fighting for the jobs, and that's how Jimmy wanted it. He wanted the competition. So we come in, 92, bam, we win the Super Bowl. 93, bam, we win the Super Bowl again. After the Super Bowl, what happens? Jerry fires Jimmy. That's unheard of. That would be like saying, you know what? I don't like success. <laughs> Us winning Super Bowls is not enough. You're fired. It doesn't happen that way. And I tell this story because this is the problem. When Jimmy came in, they didn't accept the change. Flat out didn't accept it. When he got his own people in, they bought into what he was trying to do. And when they bought in, they would run through that wall. I was one of them because the man knew how to lead men. He pushed the right buttons. But then when we lost Jimmy, everything went south. So what did Jimmy teach me? And it, it applies not only in your business life, but in your family life. There are four levels of commitment. Number one is existent. The boss has to tell you to do everything. Hey, clean your desk up. Hey, get that done. Do this, do that. When you're existent, you're just there. Happy to have a job. And I'll give you an example. I won't mention his name. Dwayne Goodrich, but I'm not going to mention his name. <laughs> We're in St. Louis. And Dwayne Goodrich was our fifth corner. Well, our number one corner goes down. And Dwayne Goodrich is the next guy in line. I look him right in the eyes. And he does not want to get on the field. Dwayne was content on the fact that he got drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in the second round. After that, it was over with. He had the status that he wanted. But he was existent. And then there's those people that are compliant. I'm going to show up. When they tell me to show up, I'm going to act like they want me to act. I'm going to dress like the, the way they want me to dress, but I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to make this business any better. I'm just going to be compliant. Compliant is flat out mediocrity. Think about that in your heart. Am I just compliant? Am I existent or am I compliant? Where am I right now? And then there's committed. Write it down. It's number three. You're going to show up on time. You're going to make sure the boss knows that, hey, I'm all the way in, guys. I'm here. But then when you leave, when that committed person leaves the business, and goes home, he thinks about home. But let me tell you the one I like. That person that's compelled. I was raised by my mother. I didn't have a father my father figure in my life. But there was no one coming into the to Henson Projects to talk about you know, what it takes to be compelled for greatness. Lovey Smith is my position coach at Arizona State 20 some years ago. He was that father figure in my life. And he totally changed my mindset. Look at yourself. Look within yourself and find out who are you? Am I committed to doing the job that I'm doing or am I compelled? And that's what I'm asking you guys today. Who are you? You want someone to go from existent to compelled, you have to keep them on your hip and guide them. Be a leader. Knowing that you're some of the greatest defensive players to ever play, but more important than all of that was how valuable he was as a person, as a player, how dependable he was, how durable he was. His passion, his character, his leadership was everything that the Ring of Honor is supposed to be about. Welcome Darren Woodson to the Ring of Honor.